doing the presentation for you all today. Um, I know Mr. Asazi is a great presenter, so I'll try my best to, to follow under his footsteps for Math 1324, okay? All right, so today, um, um, for this coming week, um, as you all may know, we have three more weeks of school, and, and the last topics to cover in 1324 are going to be these, okay? So we'll start with sets. Um, and and everything that follows and i'll try to try my best to try to get through through all of these topics that mr sassy has prepared for you all okay so let's go ahead and get started so what is a set so a set is a well-defined collection of objects um example of sets um are well-defined collection of objects for instance an example all the students in my math class, right? So that can be considered a set. Um, um, the letters in an alphabet, okay? This could be a considered a set. Um, what is not a well-defined collection? Um, well, an example would be the collection of young adults. That's not a well-defined set. I mean, that's it's very broad, very general. But if we say the collection of young adults between the ages of 18 and 29 is a well-defined and it constitutes a set okay so a set is is a collection of objects or items um, that can be defined um, you we've all covered already in 1324 matrices and you saw when we were dealing with matrices we like to give names to our matrices matrix a matrix b because we we do things with these matrices right so um sets is going to follow suits okay um when we're looking at, at particular sets, we're gonna give it a name. And um, as before, um, the names are given in capital letters and it's usually just a letter of our of the alphabet, right? Um, as example, A, B, or C, as again, as you saw in matrices, okay? Now, um, the elements um, inside a set or the objects inside a set are called, again, elements or members of the set, okay? Um, how do we distinguish that we're dealing with a set? Um, again, referring back to matrices, we, we knew that we were dealing with a matrix, matrix when we had a, a box um, or a square bracket, correct? So now um, when we're dealing with sets, we're going to see the squiggly bracket. So this, this will let us know that we are dealing with a set. An example of a set is this one. Um, we have the set A, we give it capital letter A, and the set consists of these three elements, three, four, five, okay? All right, now, this symbol the, that looks like a, like a weird E, this is a Greek symbol, okay? Um, and the, the definition of this symbol is, it stands for an element of the set. I, I like to say, um, it contains or it exists, right? So, and I like the word exists because it looks like a lot like an E. So, so I, I interpret that sim that Greek symbol as it exists in the set, right? So let me give you an example. Um, if I have this set again, um, set A, which is three, four, five, and I have three is an element of A or is three exist in A, um, we can, say like this, three um, is an element of three, four, five, right? So three is an element of set A or three is an element of the set containing three, four, five. And you see that the number three is part of my set. It's included in here, okay? Now, when we write a slash over a symbol, uh, we, re we represent that as not, okay? So when we do, we... we it's the opposite, right? When we do a slash, means that the element is not included in the set. So for instance, if, we, if I say two is not an element in A, um, and it's true, you don't see the number two uh, inside our elements of the set, correct? So again, please stop me, ask me questions if something is not clear, okay? All right, so let's, to some definitions and examples of sets, okay? Um, very, very important to know that um, the empty set is a set with no elements. Now, the symbol for the empty set 
can be represented in two ways. Um, a circle with a slash through it. Um, please keep in mind, again, when you guys are doing computer homework, do not put brackets on this, okay? Um, it's either the brackets by themselves with nothing inside that represents the empty set or just the circle with the slash um, through it, okay? These two representations represent an empty set. Um, for two sets to be equal, they have to have the same number of elements and they have to have the same elements. So for example, here, uh, if I have sets three, four, five, even though that the order is not the same, it still has three elements and it has the same elements. They have both three, four, five. It may not be in order. The order does not matter inside the sets. So this makes these two make them equal. And again, including this third one, four, three, five, even though they're out of order, um, all these three sets have just three elements and all elements are the same. So for two sets to be equal, they have to have the same number of elements and they have to be the same elements for two sets to be equal, okay? Um, so all these examples that you've seen on how I written sets, we call this the list method, okay? We just list all the elements or, or all the objects inside the set. Um, but we also do what's called a shorthand notation, which is called set builder notation. And uh, the way we represent set builder notation is by, again, we're going to use brackets to indicate that we're dealing with a set. And the, the X here will, is going to represent the set that we're interested in. Okay, so, so we can call it A, B, C. Um, then we have this little, um, as we call it in, in typing, it's a pipe board, just a, like a vertical line. Now you saw this before. Um, the way I like to, to recall this now that we're doing sets is if you all recall when we were doing matrices, when we were converting a, a linear system into its augmented matrix form, we had the, the coefficients of the variables on the left, and then we would do a, a line, right? That meant equals to the solution. So in, in, in our set builder notation, it somewhat means the same um, that, that this set is going to be equal to what we say we want inside of it. But the, the way we read this, or the true term when we're dealing with sets, is called such that. Okay? But again, I like to think of it it's as the equal part. So what this is saying when we write this in set builder notation, it means that we have this given set x such that x has property of p and again this could be several things and, and we'll see several examples so one thing also to keep in mind when we're doing with sets that you'll see in your homework is just to to recap and to review whole numbers are just the the counting numbers zero one two three four till infinity okay um and which also um it's part of our counting numbers right which is one two three four to infinity and the natural numbers are the counting numbers so it's just things we need to know so let's give you let me give you an example of how we can um, write something in set builder notation and the definition in a list method right so if we look at example a here we read this as uh, set x such that x is a natural number more than five and less than eight. As you can see, this is this is a well-defined set. We're not just looking at all the numbers, but we're looking at a particular group. We are looking at the numbers, our natural numbers that are more than five, but less than eight. So the list method would include only six and seven, right? Six is more than five and less than eight, and seven is less than eight, okay? Another example, converting from set builder notation to the list method. If I have this x such that x is an integer and negative and x is greater than negative three and less than or equal to one. Okay, so we have two conditions for this one. One, it's an integer and the other that it's between negative three and one, but not in, um, the number has to be greater than three and less than or equal to one. So if we look at these, the answer in list in the list method would be negative two, negative one, 
zero, and one. Okay, so you'll see this on your homework um, to add, to give the list of the elements when is given in what's called set builder notation. Okay. All right. So let's do some homework examples. Okay, these are from from your book. State whether this statement is true or false. Okay, so if we look at three here, three such that um, or three contained in this set. So I look at the set here, which is two, five, seven, nine, ten. Do I see the number three in here? No. So then my answer is false. It's not an element in the set. If I look at number two, okay, is two an element in the set? And I see that two is right here. So then the answer will be true. So two is an element that exists in the set. Um, remember here, when we draw the line across the it exists, means that it does not exist. So we are saying here, six does not exist in the set one, three, five, seven, nine. And that is true. Six is not an element in the set. So our answer would be true. Um, example four, four is not, or four does not exist in our set. Um, this, this, this statement is false because four is an element in the set. I, in, I have included this number four part of this, this set, okay? Um, number five, I'm saying now one, two, three, four, this set is equal to this other set, four, two, three, one. Even though the order is out of order, okay, they still, these two sets are equal, one, because they have the same number of set uh, elements and they have the identical elements inside the set. So those, both, both of those sets are equal. But let's look at number six. Um, the statement is saying a, a set ABC is equal to ABCD. And obviously this one is a straightforward false because not only um, um, it does have the sum of the same elements, but it has an additional one. So this first set has only three elements. This set on the right side of the equal sign has four elements. So hence they're not equal. Okay. Um, let's, let's look at this example. All the whole numbers greater than five and less than nine. All right, so all the whole numbers greater than five would be six, seven, eight, nine, and so on and so forth. But then it also says, and the other requirement is that they have to be less than nine. So I know that those numbers are only six, seven, and eight. Hence, that's what they're telling me that it's equal to. They're giving me this list with just these three numbers, six, seven, and eight. So the hence, this two sets are equal. One is given in, in, in the English language, right? Um, and the other one is given as a list. Um, let's do another one as an English language. It says, all natural numbers not greater than four, okay? So all natural numbers not greater than four. So first of all, um, here, even though this is true, that these are three, two, one is not greater than four, Zero is not a natural number, so hence this this statement would be false. These two sets are not equal to each other. Let's look at number nine as a set builder notation. Um, x such that x is an even integer and x is greater than or equal to five, less than or equal to 19. So it has to be even. So the numbers that I'm looking at greater than or equal to five are 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, I'm uh, sorry, um, I'm just naming them, um, even numbers, right? I said 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. Um, oh, and, and we're missing 18. So because we're missing 18, this statement will be false, all right? All right, the last one, 10. X such that X is a vowel. So what are the, our vowels? Our vowels are A, E, I, O, U. So hence, these two um, sets are equal to each other, okay? So um, hopefully you, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, um, keep in mind the symbol means contains, and for two sets to be equal, they have to have the same number of elements and the identical elements. All right, now let's introduce what's something that's called subsets and
proper subsets, okay? So first, the symbol to represent that um, something is a subset is, is this like C looking thing or an elongated C with a line underneath of it, okay? So I have here the book definition of a subset, um, um, but the, the best way to understand this is that um, the subset means it's, it's a set that has some of the elements of the main set. You can think of, the, uh, of, of one set as a main set and the subset, a lower set, of a smaller version of the original one, okay? Now, a proper subset is where all the elements in A are also in B and vice versa. All the elements in B are also in A, okay? So that's what's considered a proper subset. Now, um, this statement here in your book is very, very important, okay? Um, let's start with this one. As you all recall, and we just covered, this is the symbol for the empty set. The empty set um, is a subset of all sets, okay? It's uh, the empty set is, is, is included in all sets. Now, because of this, the empty set is a proper subset of A, okay? And also the, the, the freebie here, A is a subset of itself, of course. You know, if I'm looking at the same set twice, then all of the elements are the same because I'm looking at the same one. So a set is a proper subset of itself, okay? So let's look at some examples here. If I, if I give you this set A, which is A, B, C, the set B, which is A, B, C, D, and set C, which is C, A, B, I can say that A is a subset of B because every element in A is also in B, okay? Um, um, B, B says A is a proper subset of, um, sorry, I have those backwards. The first one was a proper subset, excuse me. Um, a is a proper subset of B. So because every element in A is also in B, this makes it a proper subset. Um, the second one, A is a subset. Um, sorry, guys. Um, I was, subset is with the underline. I was right the first time. Excuse me. Um, this one is for subset and no line is for proper subset. So again, for B, A is a proper subset of B. We read this that every element of A is an element of B, but B contains at least one element not in A, okay? Um, C, remember, um, the, the slash has not changed. When we write a slash over the symbol, that means not. So we read this as B is not a proper subset of A. That means every element of B is not in A, okay? Um, D, A is a subset of C. This means that every element in A is also in C. Okay. Example E, A is not a proper subset of C, which is A is not a proper subset of C because A is not equal to C. A, these two are, are not the same, right? Um, even though that they're, they're not in the same order, okay, um, or because they're not in the same order, that makes them not a proper subset. And then we have this last one, which we, that I talked about, we have the empty set. Empty, the empty set is a proper, a proper set, a subset, excuse me, of A. This means that the, set, the empty set is a subset and proper subset of any set because it's included. And we'll see this in, in some more examples. Okay. All right. So let's look at your homework. Okay. So if we're given these sets, let A equal um, negative 4, 0, 4, B equal negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, C is equal to negative 4, negative 1, 0, 4, D is equal to 0. Now, um, before I continue, okay, the fact that I have a 0, this is, this does, this, 
does not represent the empty set. This includes one element. The element is zero. Even though it's the number zero, um, this is still a set that has one element, which is zero. Again, the way we represent empty, that there's nothing in the set, is just the brackets by themselves or the circle with a slash through it, okay? Um, set E has just one element as well, which is the negative four. And then we have this, um, this like U looking symbol, okay? Um, this, this symbol in sets, we, we, we consider it the universe, okay? Um, and, and I'm gonna go over it when we start introducing Venn diagrams. But what this symbol U means is all the numbers that are going to be included in all of our sets. So all these numbers are belong to all these other sets. And, and it's part of to explain this concept of uh, subset and proper subset. Okay. So in our problem, it says insert this, this elongated C um, if it's a um, subset or a slash with the elongated C to show that it's not a true statement, right? So the first one, A um, and U. Again, these these in red weren't included, okay? Um, they, they, it's fill in the blank. So this is where they're looking at subset uh, set A, which is negative 404 with the universe. So we can say that every element in A is in the element of U, but U contains at least one element not an A, okay? And it contains several, but this is what makes this um, a um, proper subset, right? Um, 12, E and A. So if we look at E, E is just negative four. A is negative four, zero, four. This one also is the same. This one is a proper subset because every element in E is an element in A, but A contains at least one element not in E, okay? How about A and E? So we have A is negative four, zero, four, and E is um, negative four. So here, A is not a subset of E, but if we would flip them, if we would do E, E would be a subset of A because E is part of A, right? But they, they flipped them. So make sure we read these correctly, that this is our, our we're saying that, that um, A is a lower one and E is our major one. And, and that's not the case. E only contains one element, A contains the three elements. Okay. How about 14? Um, B and C. So B is these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements. And C is just these four elements. Just by the number of elements, we can say that this is not a um, subset of C because the elements in B are not in some of the elements in C, okay? Uh, 15, um, the empty set and A. Well, we're saying that the empty set is a subset of A, right? A is my main one, and even though we don't write it here, the empty, it's included. It's implied that we also have an empty variable in there, okay? Um, let's look at this one. Um, this one, they gave us a list of the set. Zero, one, uh, blank, D. So if we have D, D is zero. So this one is saying that zero, one is a subset of D. Again, if we would flip it, then it would be true. D is a subset of zero, one, but not the other way around, okay? Um, 17, D and zero, one, which is what I just said. <laughs> um, um, because D is one element and zero, one is the main element, um, it is a subset of zero, one. D is, is a subset of zero, one. Um, 18 is D blank B. So D again is zero, B includes that zero, so D is a proper subset of B, okay? And the last one, A and C. A is negative four, zero, four, and C is negative four, one, zero, four, okay? So A is, every element in A is an element in C, but C contains at least one element not in A. So this is what makes this also true, okay? 
please ask me if you have any questions. Again, uh, what Mr. Asazi does is he, he gets questions from your homework to help you um, answer them better. Okay. All right, so let's look at a little bit more in detail this about subsets. So if I wanted to list all the possible subsets of a given set, okay, it's all the combinations that, that we can think of, right? So if I have this a small set, four and six, okay, um, when we list them, it's very easy to forget the list itself, okay? Don't forget to, to include this one. Four and six is part of the subset of four and six. It's itself, okay? But um, a subset of four and six could be just the six by itself or the four by itself. And let's not forget the empty set, okay? Because the empty set is included in all sets, okay? All right, what about B? Let's find all the subsets of A, B, C. So all the subsets of A, B, C, again, we should not forget the, the set itself, A, B, C, um, but we also have the empty set, but then we have um, variations, right? We can have just A, just B by itself, just C, the element by itself, or A, B, A, C, um, B, C, um, and then again, the A, B, C in, um, as a whole, right? So we can write them out, but if you're asked on your homework to find the set of n distinct elements that a subset has, this is the formula, two to the n, where n is the number of elements that are in the set. So for example, if I have this um, set three, I have one element. So if I wanna find out how many subsets this has, it would be two to the n, which n is again, I have one element, so two to the one, two to the one is two. So I have two subsets. What are those two subsets? What well, it would be three and the empty set. Those are the two. Again, we always include the empty set as an element in the set, even though we don't write it inside the set, okay? What about 21, red, white, and blue? Um, we have three elements in our set. So to calculate the number of subsets, it would be two to the third power and two to the third power would be eight. So we have eight total of distinct subsets. And again, we can list them. It could be red by itself, white by itself, blue by itself, the red, white, and blue all together. Um, we can do red, white, red, blue, white, blue, um, and the empty set, and we get all eight of them. What if they give it to us in set builder notation? So number 22, it says, x such that x is a whole number less than five. So the whole numbers less than five are four, three, two, one, zero. How many elements do we have? Five. So to find the number of subsets, it would be two to the fifth power, which is 32 subsets. Any questions on finding um, the number of subsets? given a set, okay? Again, don't forget this formula. Very, very useful to find the number of subsets. It's always two to the n, where n is distinct, the distinct number of elements in the set, okay? All right, so what I wanna get to now is um, something that's called Venn diagrams. Now, Venn diagrams is a, another way to represent sets. Sets, as you can see, we, we see them as a list, as, as a real world language to show the elements or set builder notation. Now Venn diagrams is converting sets into a picture representation, into a graph, okay? So the first thing that you need to know that when we're dealing with, with uh, Venn diagrams is um, that our universe or all the elements and objects that we're going to be talking about are encapsulated in a rectangular box, okay? The objects or the sets, um, we give them as circles. Now, um, 
it's convention, usually we put the name on top of the circle. In this one, uh, Mr. Sasi put the A inside the circle, but um, usually we put the, the A right on top of the circle. But um, he did this to, to explain um, this concept of, of the knot, okay? So here, if I have my Venn diagram and my universe is just this one object A, okay? The object A is represented as a circle. And um, if I wanted to calculate A prime, which is A prime is A with a little hyphen on it, this means not, I'm looking at all the elements that are not inside my circle. So everything outside my circle is what I'm interested in. So let's see an example with numbers. If I have this, this uh, Venn diagram, and if you see my universe is 1 through 12, okay? I have all the, um, sorry, excuse me, 5 through 12. I have 6. Um, oh, sorry, excuse me. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right, so we have all these numbers from 1 through 12. So if I see here, if the circle was labeled as A, the elements in A would only be 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Um, but if they ask me, what are A prime, right? This means all the numbers that are not in A. So all the numbers not in A would be the numbers that are outside the circle, would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, yes? All right. Again, please feel free. You can interrupt me if you have any questions. Um, let me know, okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> what else can we do with these pictures, okay? So one of the things that you'll be asked to, to find is the intersection between two sets, okay? So if I have set A and B, the intersection, and the symbol for intersection is like this upside down U, is all the elements that are shared between both of the circles, right? It's everything that's shared between the set A and the set B. That is the intersection. Um, when, when you see it in your homework, they might not say the intersection, but they may ask you, what are all the elements in A and B? So the word intersection in English represents is represented by the word and, okay? Um, so it's only the values that are the elements that are in common. So again, we have this universe. Our universe, again, is, is the numbers 1 through 12. And I'm saying now that my set A is only 1, 2, 3, 4. And set B is 2, 4, 6, 8. So if I wanted to find the intersection of A and B are only the numbers that are shared between both sets A and B. And then you see graphically, that's why we love Venn diagrams, because we can look at the picture and without having to do anything else, we can automatically know what our answer is. Our answer is just two and four. These are the two numbers, two elements that these two sets share. And, and that's the beauty of learning Venn diagrams is to do math a lot quicker. It's just the visual aspect of, of sets. Okay. Um, let's, let's look at this one. Let um, set, let the universe set be 1 through 12 again, and we have set A be 1, 2, 3, 4, set B 2, 4, 6, 8, and C B 5, 7, 9, 11. So disjoint sets are sets that have nothing in common, and the best way to see it visually is on this, this graph on the left, right, this Venn diagram on the left. You see, I have this circle A by itself, and I have this circle C by itself. It's, it's really easy to see that none of the elements in A are shared in the elements in the set C. So these two sets are considered to be disjoint because they have nothing in common, okay? Um, <clears throat> so let's look at, at an example. Find the intersection of A and C. So the answer would be, the empty set, they have nothing in common. Or you could also write it as the two squiggly brackets, but with nothing inside of it. Don't put a zero, because what you're telling us is that the element that they share is zero, okay? So, so either do the circle with a line or the brackets with nothing inside, all right? What about this one? Um, I wanna find the, the union of A and B. So. So the union, now opposite to intersection, 
the symbol is now the right side U. Okay, don't confuse it with the universe. Okay, so so this symbol between A and B in the sets is called union, and the way we read that in the English is considered the or. Okay, I want to look at the elements in A or the elements in B. And again, this is what's called a union. So if I wanted to find the union between A and B, um, given this um, universe, I want to look at all the values that are in my set A and all the values that are in set B. So if you see here, set A has the one, two, three, four, set B has two, four, six, eight. Now, we don't write duplicates in our set, even though that two and four, again, is the intersection part. We don't write these twice because they're being shared by both set A and set B. So we never write duplicates. Um, we only included all of the elements that are either shared or used by both sets A and B. Again, the, the word or is very useful to keep in mind. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so operations of sets. Again, we covered the not. Um, but here is an example in the set builder notation of the um, official definition of the knot. Um, the knot is a set X such that X is an element not contained in A and X is an element in the universe. Okay, so, so that means that it's part of our world, but it's not in the, object, in the set that we are looking at. The intersection, the official, as a set builder notation, is X such that X is an element in A and X is an element in B, right? It's this, this middle part where it's shared by both, okay? The union in set builder notation, X such that X is an element in A or an element in B or both, right? It could be in A only, B only, or shared, okay, this is the, the union. All right, so let's look at some exercises. So there, we're given this universe um, and these sets, X, Y, Z. Let's do the first one. This one says X and the intersection of Y. I wanna look at only the values that are, are shared by both X and Y. And again, it would be really easy to see the answer. We had a Venn diagram, but if, if we are just given the list, we have to match them. So X is A, B, one, two, three. What are the elements that are the same in Y? So if we look in Y, um, they both share the B, they both share a one, and they both share a three. So those are the only elements that are shared in both or are intersected between X and Y, B, one, and three. What about 24? X and the union of Y. This means I'm looking at the elements in X or the elements in Y. So technically, I would list all of them without the duplicates, all of the X and all of the Y. It would be A, B, 1, A, B, 1 2, 3. I already have B, so I don't include that, but I would have to add D. I don't have to include 1 because I already included it in X. I don't have to include 3, but I would have to include 5 because 5 is in Y but not in X. What about 25? X prime, that means not in X. So I am looking at all of the elements that exist in my universe except in set X. So I am looking at the way I would compare it to help you out. Don't look at Y and Z, just look at X and the universe, okay? Because if they're in the other ones, um, that's what we want. We want them not in X, but everywhere else they can be in. So here um, we have A, B, one, two, and three, right? Those are the elements that we do not want to include in X. So we take those away from our universe that will give us the C, D, E, four, and five, okay? How about this one? We're getting a little bit more complicated, 26. Um, not in X, intersection with not in Y. All right, so what this means is we don't want to include the elements in X. Um, we don't want to include the elements in Y, but we want the intersection of the elements that are not included in these, okay? So because they're talking about 
all the elements that that are here then that means that we don't have anything right that the elements that are not in x intersection not in y would be just the c e and four okay how about 27 again when we do venn diagrams i love venn diagrams because it's very easy to see the answers so here we say not in x intersection with z so if we see here um not in x would would have to be all these elements except for a b one two three one two and three right but um intersection with z so we have b two and three and if you see there these are included um in x so then my answer is the empty set or again as squiggly brackets or a circle with a slash now 28 again we keep getting a little bit more complicated we have to follow the order of operations um so if you remember or basic order of operations we do anything that's in parentheses first multiplication and division and addition and subtraction last same thing here with the sets we want to do everything that's in the parentheses first and then and then we branch out so when we do this problem, the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the intersection between Y and Z. So what does Y and Z share? So Y and Z share the B and the 3. The, that's the only thing. So that's what I have here. Now I have X union with B3. So X is A, B, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And I already have from the intersection b and three so that's just my answer a b one two three is my answer for 28 okay um again if we're looking at just in detail x not in x r c d e four five y um is b d one three five not in y would be everything else other than these elements a c e two four um and if we have z is b two three okay um if we want to do the intersection between y and z is the elements that they share so the elements that they share are just b and three okay so hopefully this helps you out all right again so more into venn diagrams you will be required to create a venn diagram given the list of sets now um the best way to do this is always to to do the intersections first okay so when 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 building a venn diagram is always start with the inner intersection and then you work your way out okay so if i have this um universe which has a b c d e f and g i have three sets i have set a b and c Set A is A, D, E, G. Set B is B, D, F, G. Set C is C, E, F, G. So just to get ready to build our own, just based on this graph, we see that the intersection of A and B is just D and G, right? These, these two elements that are shared both with, between A and B. The intersections of A and C are just E, G. The intersection of B and C are just F, G. And the intersection of A, B, and C is just G. So this is the one that you always want to start with. The intersection of all of the sets means that um, is the most inner little, I guess you want to talk, uh, think of it as a triangle or, or a diamond. Okay. When we're building this, we always want to build from the center out. All right. So let's look at these examples um 60 people were contacted to respond to a movie survey the following information was obtained six people liked comedies dramas and science fiction so just by this first question alone um our first statement okay we see that we're going to have three sets right we have um for comedy drama and um science fiction so if six people liked all three that means that that's our center okay um and we want to work our way way out so here it says 13 people like comedies and drama oh that's the intersection between 
the comedies and drama okay so and we start building our way out so here are, are the are the syntax for for these words right the first one is um, that six people like comedies drama science fiction um, the intersection of comedies and drama this is the intersection between comedy and science fiction the next one is the intersection between drama and science fiction and then they tell us just the individual ones 26 just like comedy 21 just like drama and 25 just like science fiction so when we're when we're doing our venn diagram again we want to work our way out we start with our intersections and start subtracting or adding the elements to our total okay to so we can have the same um values now this is a powerpoint i wish um i could have done it in blank to show you how it works better let me see if um the next example we jump into probability um but again before i before i jump to another topic does anybody have any questions so again when building venn diagrams you want to build um from the inside out okay all right so the next topic that i want to cover is probability okay um so some of some of you are um, may be familiar with probability. We we hear we hear of it all the time, right? The best example of of a, an experiment that that requires um, probability is this about flipping a coin, right? If if someone wants to you know or my football fans out there, right? Um, to start a game, they have to flip a coin to see who starts, right? So the probability that one, one team starts before another is a 50-50 chance, right? Now, the, it's a percentage, right? Um, and you can either get heads or you can get tails, right? But this is the, this is the most common um, representation of probability. But probability is um, given by a random experiment where we, we don't know the outcome until we do that experiment. Again, we don't know who's going to play first until the coin is flipped once the coin is flipped and we get a heads or tail then we know what um that answer is again so a random experiment is and it's an uncertain uh, outcome until we do that experiment okay so our sample space of an experiment is all of the possible outcomes so if i'm looking at flipping a coin all the possible outcomes that I can get when I flip a coin is heads or tails. So my sample space would be two. I only have two options that can result in um, flipping a coin. Well, what's another experiment that you guys might be familiar with? Well, rolling a dice, right? When you roll a dice, a dice has six faces. You know, they have dots. You have one dot, two dots, three dots, four dots, five dots, six dots. Okay. So if I wanted to find the probability of a number, um, I have to first roll the dice in order for me to get an outcome. But to explain sample space, how many options or possibilities can I get when I roll the dice? Well, it's one through six, right? So my sample space from rolling the dice is six. Now, uh, one way to find all possible outcomes is by doing what's called a um, probability tree, okay? and uh, and um, to do this, you start with the name, right? What is our experiment? Our experiment is flipping a coin twice. So if I wanna flip a coin twice, not just once, but twice, okay? First, I start off with my sample space on the coin. The coin only has two possible outcomes, heads or tails, okay? Let's do flipping it once. If I flip it once, I could either get heads or I could either get tails. Um, if um, again, um, and then if I flip it again, okay. If I got heads, I had my second options or outcomes could be either heads or tails. Or if I on the first flip I got tails, when I flip it again, the other options that I can get, I can get either heads or tails. 
So all of the possible um, samples that I can get from flipping a coin twice would be getting heads, heads, or heads, tails, or tails, heads, or tails, tails. So my sample space would be these four outcomes. Okay. All right. So an event, an event is an outcome or set of outcomes that of a random experiment. So an example, if the sample space of flipping a coin is heads or tails, then one event could be getting the heads, right? An event is an outcome, it's is a result of our experiment. So let's let's look at these checkpoints, okay? Um, suppose a die is tossed, okay? So when we see the word die, that means we're tossing not just one, but two dice, right? Or, or plural for, for dice is die, right? So write the given elements in set notation. The number showing is less than three. So our sample space from when we when we throw it when we throw a, a die is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So if the number is less than three, okay, that means it can be either two or one. So as a set, it's just the elements one and two. What about the number showing is five? Well, there's only way that we can get five is if we get that number five. So it's just one way, uh, one event that we can get five. Um, what about the number is showing eight? Uh, there's no eight in a dice. The, the biggest number in a dice is six. So this would be the, the empty set, okay? Um, D, the number showing is even. Oh, okay, so the numbers even from a dice would be the two, four, and six. So we have three elements. All right, let's move on. So, so now let's talk about what I, what you all know. You know, when I was explaining uh, flipping a coin, right? Um, most of us know that that we we know that it's a, te a tails or heads outcome, and we know that that probability is a 50-50 chance, right? You can either get um, a tails or a head. But how do we come up with this percentage? Well, it's given by this formula. The probability of an event is given by the, the, the number of elements that we want divided by our sample space. So let's, let me give you some examples, okay? Um, the tossing a die. Um, I want a die that shows an even number. Well, the even numbers for a die are two, four, and six is three elements. But what is my sample space? My sample space is six. So N of E was three. It was three possible outcomes that I can get, two, four, and six. My sample space is six. So we, we simplify our fraction three, six to one half, which is 50%, right? Um, and we can see that. If there are six numbers, three of them are odd, three of them are even, the chances of us getting an even number is half, right? 50, 50. What about this one? Die shows number less than 10, okay? So here we have um, six elements, right? We can get um, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? And our sample space is six. So the probability that we get a number less than 10 is 100, right? It's one, right? It's 100% because there's only, um, all the numbers in a dice are less than 10. So our problem, our chances of it happening is one. So that's I like this example because this shows that when we have a hundred percent or that that it's something for sure, the value will always be one. Okay, it's not a percentage anymore. It's not a fraction. It's a whole number one. Now also um, because I'm also running out of time, when dealing with probability, okay, you will not you'll never get an answer bigger than one. If you ever calculate a fraction and you get an answer bigger than one, we've done something wrong. Our probability, our, our answers for, prob for probability are always between zero and one. They're always going to be a fraction, a percentage, okay? But one does mean it's going to happen. It's a whole. Um, you also see this in weather, right? When, when you see the weather in the morning, for those of you who watch the news to see what what's the weather going to be like, they'll say, oh, 50%. Oh, there's 100%. If, you, if they say that it's 100%, that means 
it's definitely going to rain, right? If they say 0%, that means it's not going to happen. Like example C, the die shows an 8. A dice does not have the number 8 in it. So um, 0 divided by 6 is 0. 0 means that it's not going to happen, okay? Um, so keep in mind, whenever you have the probability and the answer is 0, that means it's not going to happen. If the probability gives you the value of 1, that means it's going to happen. It's 100% for sure. It's going to happen. All right. So um, again, just to get you started, um, you're going to have a lot of probability questions with um, playing cards. Okay. So for those of you who who never played cards or or don't play solitaire, um, just to give you a, a preview as far as how to handle probabilities. Okay. Um, all decks of cards have 52 cards. Um, the cards are set up in, in, in two groups, black cards and red cards. They can also be separated by, by their suits. Their suit is their symbol, okay? Um, this one is, that looks like, like um, my little sister calls it puppy feet. It's called clubs. Um, we have spades, we have hearts, and we have diamonds, okay? Now, each, um, each type of card has, a, has a, a face card. It has a king, queen, and a jack, and it also has a number cards, 10 through 2. Now, we also have the ace. The ace we like to consider, you can think of it as a 1, but um, it's a letter A. Okay, so, but the, the, the face cards are considered the king, queen, and jack, and um, then we have numbers. Again, we have two different colors. We have black and red cards. They're even, 26 black cards, 26 red cards. Again, the total sample space of a card is 52 cards, okay? And again, I won't start with um, these examples. Um, you will find this recording um, with the rest of the slides on, on, our, on our page. If anybody has any additional questions, please stick around. Our tutors are, are very knowledgeable and help you out. Again, thank you for joining me. Uh, we expect to have Mr. Zassi back next week. Um, I, I'm sure you all um, enjoy his lectures instead of mine. Um, again, thank you for joining us and um, hope to see you again next week.